that I'm that I'm talking about here is the um, uh, I, I guess they call it the pattern lock. So with this phone, you just hold down the button here, and it says too many pattern attempts to unlock. Sign in with your Google account. Uh, on this phone, um, we don't have the we don't know the Google account or the password. I don't know if it didn't get synchronized or what, but um, the Google account that we use doesn't work to unlock it. And um, there are tutorials on the internet about how to get around this, how to unlock the phone. Um, but most of them say that the phone has to be, I believe, in developer's mode to be able to unlock it. Um, and if you didn't put the phone in developer's mode before it got locked, there's no way to do it as far as I know. So, your option then is to um, restore the phone to its factory settings. To do that, uh, let's see, when you power on the phone, you hold the volume up button. Hold the volume up button, and uh, then you hit the power. You'll uh, you hold it down. You'll you'll feel it vibrate, and then you can let go. And you'll see a little Android logo or something come up. And you've got some options. Uh, you can say it says wipe. Data, re, data wipe data factory reset. Your menu may look a little different uh, than this one, but if you do that, it will destroy everything on your phone, your pictures and videos and everything that you've you've taken. At least that's what I'm told. I haven't tried it out yet. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is uh, rescue rescue. Uh, the pictures and and videos off of this phone before we do that factory reset so the first thing you're gonna need to do you need a computer and if you're on a Windows computer you're gonna need to get the driver for your phone so that you can um, so that the computer will recognize the phone uh, Mac OS X users and Linux users, I'm told, have a driver that comes with the system. This is a uh, ZTE brand. So, and I can't remember if I got the OEM driver from ZTE or if I got a generic driver, but um, I'll have the links posted to some possible places to get some drivers to install to your Windows machine. So once you've got the driver installed, um, you need to boot up the phone into uh, what's called field test mode. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Shut off. Shut off the phone. So in, to get into field test mode, rather than pressing the volume up button, you press the volume down button and hold down the power button until it vibrates again. You can let go. And then you sh should see maybe a plain screen that'll say FTM. It may look different on different systems. That's what it looks like on this phone. Once, um, and then you can connect it to the computer once it's in FTM mode, and then your computer should recognize uh, if the driver is installed, it will recognize it as on Windows it's called an ADB device, I believe. Um, 
I'll show you a picture of it once I get the phone connected. And from there, um, I will show you what we need to do next. Okay, I've got my phone in field test mode, and the drivers are installed on my computer. When I plug in my phone, you'll see that a new device will be um, detected. Up here at the top, ADB interface, uh, handset ADB interface. I don't know if all phones will have that same label or not. So now the <coughs> computer recognizes my phone. So now we just need to be able to uh, access the files on it. And to do that, we need a, a program, an executable called ADB, which I can't remember what it stands for, but it's part of the Android Software Development Kit. Uh, you can get it if you go to developer.android.com forward slash SDK and it's called the ADT Bundle. Uh, I've got it uh, downloaded here oh. already so we want to open up that zip file and under SDK there's a folder called Platform Tools and that has our ADB executable so that's the folder we want. <coughs> uh, I'm going to extract it here. Oops. And what you're going to want to do is open a command prompt and you're going to want to um, CD into that folder. <coughs> I have it set up so I can open a command prompt right from that folder. And when we execute ADB, it will automatically detect the phone. We don't need to tell it exactly where the phone's at. But so if we do ADB slash shell, we'll be able to browse our browse the files on our phone. And we can browse it just like we would uh, most other Unix style systems. And the storage folder is where the files are that we want. Um, let's also check that SD card folder. Permission denied. Okay, so yeah, the the storage is where we want to go. CD storage. And we've got two SD card folders: SD card zero and SD card one. Um, SD card zero, I believe, is the external SD card. Uh, hmm. Not found. Well, SD card one is the internal storage. And under that DCIM folder is where all my pictures and, and videos are. So these are the files that I want to rescue off of my phone. So I'll go ahead and exit out of here. And we're going to pull those files. Uh, we're going to use a command the command will be adb pull and we need a, a folder to place our pulled files off so I'm going to just create a new folder right in this directory and call it extracted Oops. And I'm going to execute command adb pull and forward slash. If I want to extract everything that I have access to, I would just leave it at forward slash and um, that would e extract everything that um, the regular user has uh, permissions to to view or, or copy. Um, but since I don't need to extract everything off of the um, the phone. I'm just going to extract everything that's um, in that SD card folder. So um, forward slash storage slash SD card one, and then and then the folder where I want to um, uh, extract it to, and that I called extracted, and then hit enter, and it'll start pulling all the files off that's that is in that SD card one folder. And this might take a few minutes depending on how many files you have or the size of the files. Now, uh, this device, like I said before, is not rooted, so it cannot pull anything off that um, the regular user doesn't have permission to view. 
but the uh, pictures and everything that you should want to rescue um, should um, be viewable by the regular user. Okay, so now it's pulled all the files off. If we look in this extracted folder, we should see a all the directories that were pulled off. And here's my pictures and my video. So now that I've rescued all of my data off this phone, now I can do a factory reset to restore it to its uh, default settings and get that phone unlocked. Okay, uh, a note on shutting down um, the ADB service. Uh, you'll notice when you start it, uh, ADB, it's, um, it starts a daemon or a service. And after that service is running, you're not going to be able to delete that uh, platform tools folder where the ADB executable is found. So uh, one way to, to stop the service is go through the task manager and uh, just kill it. But you can also use an ADB ca ADB command to stop the to stop the service, and that would be ADB kill dash server. And now we should be able to delete that folder.